Richie Rich Show. Hey, what's up, y'all? What's up, my Richie Rich? I don't know. What should I call my fans? Richie Richites? Richites? <laughs> what should I call y'all, man? Um, thank y'all for supporting and showing love and listening to my rambling and bullshit sometimes. It's cool, you know. Um, I like that about YouTube. You can reach out and touch someone, you know, and talk and share experiences. Like I said, when I started this YouTube channel, right, I just wanted to document my life, you know, as a truck driver. Um, it's funny, I never saw myself as a truck driver, ever. Um, I've been doing this thing 11 years going on, and um, 12 years ago, you couldn't tell me I'd be being a truck driver or dealing with some of the things that I've been dealing with driving trucks. It's been a hell of a journey. <sighs> Hell of a journey, hell of a journey. And I sit back and re I reflect on the jobs I had and the paths that I went, you know, being a truck driver and the companies I worked for. And that's what brings me to this series that I'm making called Reviewing the Companies I Used to Work For. And today we're going to talk about Martin Transportation out of Mondovi, Wisconsin. Um... I got on Martin Transportation and I worked for them for approximately, let me see, one month. <laughs> and then you guys are like, Martin for one month? Yeah, um, I did my orientation in Virginia at their Richmond facility. It's, uh, I forget what that little place is called. It's, it sits there by the pilot off of uh, 85 and uh, 95, like right there in that corner outside of Richmond. Um, one thing that I liked about Martin is that they had terminals throughout the country. They have terminals in California, Texas, um, Madovi, Wisconsin, Virginia, um, I think Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and some other places I can't remember. But their facilities are actually really nice. Um, oh, Atlanta, Georgia, that's it. They have a facility in Atlanta, Georgia. But their facilities were really nice. Um, Martin Transportation, I'm going to tell you the good and the bad. So let's start with the good. One thing that Martin taught me, which exposed me to, was detention. Back then, and this is about, oh, maybe six or seven years ago, Martin had a very good detention policy. Actually one of the best in the industry, I believe. Now, I don't know if they continue that to this day, but back in the day, they had a very good trans, I mean, detention policy. Um, it was so good that when you pulled up to a, uh, a shipper, they had a placard outside the window that said, Martin Transportation Employees and Drivers, inform the window, inform the dispatch when you get here. Okay? Because what was happening is, you know how some shippers kind of do truck drivers. They'll say, uh, we'll get to you when we get to you. And you'll be sitting there for seven hours. Well, with Martin, if you sat there for seven hours, you can actually get paid more than what the load is actually worth transportation, transporting. And a lot of companies were like, yo, if you're a Martin transportation driver, you have to let us know immediately. Because they had to get you in and get you loaded and get you off the property fast as they could. So I like that very, very much. And Martin, in, inside their trucks, they had um, Transflow. Uh, they had like a scanner that was hooked up to the Qualcomm. So after you deliver your load, you can just scan your paperwork in. Now, I'm sure they've gotten away from that now that smartphone technology has uh, advanced. But seven, eight years ago, Transflow um, was an issue for a lot of us because Transflow was only really available in truck stops. And if you weren't near a truck stop, you didn't get paid. Uh, I remember delivering a load up in, out between Nevada and California, somewhere north of Death Valley. And it, um, it, was, uh, it, was like a, it was like a Tuesday and payroll was uh, Wednesday. Well, unfortunately, the nearest truck stop was 330 miles away. So I couldn't make it because I was out of hours. So I had to spend the night there and 
by the time I got down to the truck stop, it was past uh, transfer cutoff. And it, it always sucked going in the truck stops and, you know, standing there in front of everybody and some jerk messes up the transfer machine. So I'm glad that technology has advanced. But Martin had the transfer machine in their trucks, which was really cool. Now, um, they went everywhere. They did. All 48 with them, you know. But now let me let me tell you the, the troubling part. Let me get into that because that's where everybody want to hear, right? Um, the reason I left Martin in one month, <laughs> it was less than a month, actually. A couple reasons. One, when I got my truck in, in Richmond, I remember pulling up to the gate and going inside to do orientation. And when I was sitting there doing one of the orientation break, this black guy was emptying out his truck. So I walked up to him. I said, oh, so... Are you getting a new truck? Because along the fence line in, in Richmond, they had a whole bunch of new trucks there. So I figured he was turning in his old truck, getting a brand new truck. And he was like, nah, man, I just got fired. And I was like, like, what you do? Like, what happened? Uh, about seven, eight years ago, Martin really only had manual transmissions. So this, this is the reason why he got fired. He was in uh, Cabbage. Anybody ever been up on Cabbage? I think Cabbage is in Oregon. It's that big old mountain that spirals like a like a snow cone, and then it's a ski ramp at the very bottom of it. Well, he said he was coming down that mountain, and his truck came out of gear, which was very common in, in manual trucks. You had to make sure you jam that manual, uh, that lever into the right gear, or you'll come out the gear, and next thing you know it, you won't be able to get it back in. You know, um... He said he got up to about 85 miles an hour. And see, Martin has a, tr a strict uh, policy. And a lot of trucking companies have strict policies that you guys don't know about because they don't really tell you about them. And a the strict policy is if the truck ever reaches 75 miles an hour, it's an automatic termination. Uh, Martin's transportation and a lot of mega carrier trucks are set at 65 miles an hour. And they'll let you slide up to 70 miles an hour. Um, but when it gets to 75, it starts red thinging and, and, and uh, you're automatically terminated. And that's what happened to him. He struck up to 80 miles an hour. He said he was scared to death. You know, he was praying to Jesus, <laughs> you know, that he didn't lose control. But he said, if you get this truck, watch it. And I was like, damn. So he took his stuff out the truck. Uh, Martin gave him an option. They were like, look. After it dinged, they called him and said, you have two choices. You can leave the truck up in Oregon and we'll come get it. Or you can get a load going back to uh, Richmond, but you're done. So he chose to get a load because he was from Richmond. He chose to get a load going back to Richmond. Um, when I went into orientation and I got done with orientation, it was like two days. Okay, Nice classroom, nice building. Next thing I know, they give me his truck. And I was pissed. I was like, I don't want that. It was a 10 speed, no, eight speed. And I was like, I don't, I don't want this truck. And they were like, you have to take it. The truck had like 450,000 miles on it. It was a uh, freight liner. It was raggedy, it stunk in there. They didn't really clean it out good. It had oil spit all over the bottom of the, uh, on, the on the mats. So for the first two, three weeks, I was smelling nothing but diesel and oil. Um, I kept calling, you know, Madovi and talking to management and say, hey, listen, can I please get another truck? And they were like, no, you hit, that's your truck. You have to ride it. One time I went to Atlanta. I saw they had like five brand new trucks there. So I called up. Hey, can I get another truck? They were like, no. Went to Carlisle. I see a whole bunch of trucks. They're like, no. So finally, um, I had a load from Pennsylvania going to uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. They have a terminal out there, too. And it was about two o'clock in the morning. Next thing I know, the electric goes out in the truck. The lights turn off, the dash light turns off, the headlights turn off, the market lights turn off. And I was riding in pitch black <laughs> up on Interstate 70 uh, outside of uh, Indiana. And I called breakdown. They sent somebody out, 
guy comes out and he he does something with a screwdriver and he gets the lights to turn back on. And I roll on into Indiana. Then I was heading back to Pennsylvania and it did it again. The lights turned out. It went I was driving a truck in the middle of the night, pitch black. You know how dangerous that is? I mean, if somebody was standing to me, I'd have been at fault. And I was about 30 miles outside of uh, Carlisle. And I called uh, night dispatch and I said, look, I need another truck. They're like, Rich, that's your truck. You're going to ride it. See, one thing I learned about Martin Transportation that I don't like is that they hold on to their equipment past due. They try to get every inch of revenue out of their equipment. It was very, it was very common to see uh, equipment that had almost a million miles on it. Martin just didn't want to trade in equipment on a regular basis. I don't know what they had going on, but it was just poor equipment. So I got to Carlisle, right? And they had this manager. His name was like James or Jim. He was very snippety with drivers. You know, he, uh, he, had, he was really quick lip, very smart mouth, you know. And I remember I called him and he was like, I was like, look, Jim, um, this truck has electrical issues and I, I don't want to get into an accident because it's going to be my fault. You know, uh, I'm telling you now, I need another truck and I'm here in Carlisle and I noticed there's like five trucks there. All right. Just sitting there. And there was a couple brand new ones. He got some brand new Peter belts and a brand new KW. And Jim was like, well, no, you can't. We're going to put that truck in the shop and put you in the hotel. And when it gets fixed again, we're going to call you. I was like, oh, for real? I said, okay. Lucky, but notice to him, my, my folks are from central Pennsylvania. So I called my dad up and I said, dad, can you come and get me? I took all my stuff out of his truck and I put the key on the dipstick and left it there and went on to my parents' house. Next morning, I called him and said, look, I quit. Okay. Uh, the truck is on the yard getting fixed. And he was, and they were like, well, we we were going to get you a new truck. I said, bro, I'm not I'm not playing that game with y'all. Okay, you know sometimes some trucking companies will will push the limit with you to see what you would do. Um, unfortunately, they'll risk your CDL, you know, and you got to protect your CDL because it belongs to you, not them. And had I drove in the middle of the night somewhere, and some young college kid was flying down the interstate and smacked into the back of my trailer because he couldn't see because it was pitch black because all the electrical was out. <laughs> I'd, I, Richie Rich wouldn't be talking to you now. I'd be in jail. You know, and uh, I just, you know, you know, Martin, I mean, they was cool. The miles were questionable sometime. Um, I wasn't really getting enough miles to. The paychecks were 600, 700 bucks a week of that. Um, when I used to get those big detention checks, they used to have, they used to add up a lot, you know, but I never really saw no real serious money with Martin, just, just barely enough, you know. So I parked my truck up there and I called Stevens back and they sent me a plane ticket from uh, Central Pennsylvania to Ta Dallas, Texas. And as soon as I got back to Stevens, they had a brand new um, Kenworth sitting right there on the yard for me. I had to take the plastic off the seats. There's nothing like getting into a brand new truck. You know, it was an automatic too. It's when the automatics first came out. But that new truck smell is an amazing smell, you know. But Martin, um, like I like their terminals. Like they had terminals in Tampa, which I like. They have a terminal in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, you know, Dallas, Texas, Lancaster. Um, uh, what is it? Ontario? Not Ontario. Wait, no, it's, uh, yeah, Ontario, California, I think is the other terminal. And they got one up in Washington State somewhere, I think Spokane or something. So it's a pretty big company, but they just like to ride their equipment to, to, the, to the death. Or maybe you got to be a certain type of person to get what you want out of them. But I just wasn't going to play that game, you know. Martin, um, I don't know if they still do the, uh, I don't know if they still do the um, detention like they used to because the industry right now is suffering and a lot of a lot of contracts, you know, or a lot of companies are not paying attention like they used to because business is not doing good. So 
I don't know if they still have that detention policy, but the dirty bird, <laughs> the dirty blue bird, Martin, um, I left him quickly in that piece of shit truck I did, you know, and then get into argument with Jim or Jerry, I can't think of his name, you know, he just put the ice on the cake. Uh, a lot of drivers used to tell me, yo, he was very edgy. Like, people are like, yo, you talk to him, he talks crazy to drivers. I don't know what his problem is. So, you know, but there's a lot of guys who work for Martin for a long time, you know. A lot of old timers used to work for Martin, man. But I just know Martin runs his equipment down to the ground before he trades his in. And I guess, you know, companies want to suck all kind of profit out. You know, what I liked about Stevens and Prime and who else? Uh... Indian River, even Indian River, they have a policy or a uh, procedure is when the truck gets around 350,000 miles, uh, they like to sell it and get rid of it. Uh, they want to sell it with some warranty on it. So that's why they're always getting new inventory in. Now, during the pandemic, I'm sure that slowed down because of shortages and stuff, you know, with the chips and shortages and parts and stuff. But um, I'm sure once everything got back to normal, they resumed that again. And they start getting in brand new trucks, you know. And you want to work for a company like that. You know, they're always getting new equipment. You know, trucking is a kind of a a job where you really don't want to be out here on the road with old beat down equipment. You know, you, you'll be surprised, right, how many souls have passed through the walls of a truck. <laughs> I mean, you know, hundreds of people have probably been in that truck, you know, and I couldn't imagine that truck that I was driving that had 600,000 miles on it. I couldn't imagine probably hundreds of people have been through that thing. I mean, it, it was a clunker, you know. But would I ever work for Martin Transportation again? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, um, I did like their Tampa terminal. And uh, they do have some dedicated counts that go from, like, Virginia to Florida, I think. Um, there's a YouTuber that I used to follow forget his name but um he started off at stevens and then he went and bought his own truck and he he runs his truck with martin and he makes pretty good money i think he's on or op but um i don't know what i do i don't i don't know you know you can't never say no because trucking is a type of deal that you try to burn bridges you know what i mean because you might have to cross these bridges again and uh you know martin they, they had some goods and bads but that was my experience with Martin Transportation. You know, um, some of the areas they ran, like I ran coast to coast with them, you know. Um, I stayed in the Florida area a lot, in uh, Southern California a lot, San Diego area, Arizona, um, New Mexico area. You know, I did. They, they was okay. I don't know if I can give them a thumbs up or down. You make this decision. Anyway, um, I had a couple comments on my last video. Guys like, Oh, Rich, no, don't go work for those guys, carriers. You know, you got to understand something. I'm driving for 11 years, right? And when I first came out here, I didn't know anything about trucking. Nothing. I didn't know what company to go with, who to work for, what to do. I just saw they were hiring and they were hiring quickly, you know. And like I said in my old videos, you know, your experience at a company might be great. My experience might not be the same, you know. Trucking is an individual sport. And what I mean by that is your pain threshold to bullshit. Like stuff that will bother you may not bother me at all. You know, or things that bother me may not even phase you. You know, it just depends on your tolerance to, to deal with things with these companies. So, you know, like I said, the worst companies out here who got the worst reputations, people work for them. <laughs> okay, you see, their, you see their equipment going up and down the highway every day, all day. And, and as, ba as bad as they are, there's somebody who's like, this is fine with me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in the hotel chilling, y'all. Peace and love. Y'all stay uh, stay safe out here and stay, uh, stay warm. Peace.